Now here's a typical basic drawing. As you can see, we've worked with lines, we've worked with dimensions, we're working with a fill. As you can see, that's a gradient fill, and there's some text. So now I'm going to show you how to do this drawing. We first want to just focus on the basics of the drawing elements. So if I go to my application under draw, you will see that we've got the polylines and lines. So I'm just going to explain to you the difference between the two because both of them can look exactly the same. So let's start with the polyline. So if I click on a polyline, I'll be drawing on layer zero. That's my active layer. That will be my pen color. And then I can tell Caddy, okay, let's start off with a continuous line. Now, when it comes to the width of the line, set to default, then it's getting controlled in your plot style. So, let's start off with the basics. I click on the command polyline, and then Caddy will ask me indicate start of polyline. So, as soon as I indicate the start point of the polyline, now, as you can see, there is no angle or length involved. So, Caddy asks you indicate next point of polyline, so I can left click, indicate the next point, left click, indicate next point, left click. And if I read the command line, you'll see that there's an option that says, Indicate next point of polyline, U for undo last point. So if I press U on the keyboard, that allows me to undo the last point. C to close or A for arc segment. So if I want to create an arc, I can just press A on the keyboard and Carrie will ask me indicate the end of the arc segment. I indicate the end of the arc segment and now I can either manually, as you can see, place the arc or if I want to be specific, as you can see in the command line, I can specify a radius. So I'm just going to place it manually, left click, and now I can carry on with my polyline. So if I press E for end, and I press escape, I stop my command. So now you can see my command line is empty, so I'm not in the command. So if I'm going to select this polyline now, you will see that in the object properties, it shows it as one entity. So that's the advantage of working with a polyline. At any stage, you can still modify or custom your polyline. As you can see, you've got nodes. The nodes in the middle, I can change the radius of my arc. And if I select the midpoint, as you can see, it adapt or change the arc as well as reposition your segment of your polyline. So that is when it comes to a polyline. It's one entity. When it comes to your lines, if I go to lines, I indicate the start point, as Carrie will ask me. I can indicate the next point, the next point, next point, next point. And if I press escape, you will see that if I'm going to select it now, you will see that those are individual lines. As you can see, if I select those components, it says lines four. So that's the difference between a polyline and a line. At any stage, you can select these lines. Now, when it comes to your selection, you can select from left to right, or you can select from right to left. So if you select from left to right, and you go halfway over your components, you will see it will only select what's in the vicinity of that rectangle. If I'm going to select from right to left, it will select what's inside as well as what attached. You can also select by polygon. So if I left click to start my selection box, if I read the command line, Gary will ask you, indicate opposite corner of rectangle, I for inside polygon, or C for crossing polygon. So I'm going to press I on the keyboard, and as you can see, now I can indicate an area that I want to select inside and I can press E for end and it's also select the objects. So if I want to make this a polyline I can select it, I can right click my CSM and I can ask Caddy, let's go to make and I can ask Caddy make polyline from lines and arc. So now as you can see if I left click on it it will be a polyline. Can I explode a polyline? Yes you can. So if I select the polyline I can right click and I can go down to the explode option, so then it means now it exploded to joint lines, as you can see, single individual components. So that's the difference between a polyline and a line. So let's start off with our exercise. As you can see on the right hand side, that's what we're going to create. Now with this exercise, it doesn't matter if you start with polyline or lines, let's start off with a polyline. Gary will ask me, indicate start of polyline. So I'm going to left click, and now because I know I've got a dimension that says 1100 to the right, I can type in 1100, and I can press the right arrow on the keyboard. That is the one way of giving command a length and a distance. So now what we're going to do is, I want to go 1100 up, so I can type in 1100, and I can press the up arrow key. But we also do have a command in our status bar here at the bottom that's called Polar Snap. Now, as soon as I'm going to activate the Polar Snap option, it means you will see that as I move my pointer, it will create a ghost line in the direction that I want to go. So, as you can see, there's my ghost line. 
So I can just hold my pointer in a direction and I can type in 1100 and I can press enter and it will generate a line horizontal up to that point. So now when I come down, so as you can see, as soon as I move my pointer, it gives me some signals. The reason for it is my smart snap is switched on. You will see at the bottom, there's an option that's called smart snap. Now the smart snap is that I can ask Gary that when I'm in freehand, it will give me some signals because at some stage you would like to snap to the middle of a line or to an end point of a line. Now you will see later in the exercise I'm going to talk about S for snap and as you can see my pointer change but for the beginning if you want to make use of smart snap it means you sign in freehand mode and carry will give you some signals midpoint, end point and as you will see some more as well. So now when I close my rectangle I'm going to left click and my polyline is closed. Now I would like to create a construction line in the middle, horizontal. So the command that we're going to use is on the left hand side we go to geometry and in the sub column we're going to make use of con x. So as soon as I click on the command Gary will now ask me my position for my UC is x. Now as I move my pointer once again as you can see I get signals I would like to generate one in the middle. Now as you can see I get a signal and I left click. So that means that construction line will be in the middle of that vertical line. Now I would like to create an arc, as you can see on the right hand side. Now the dimension says it's 600, so the radius will be 300. So the command that we're going to use is under the draw. In the sub column, we go down to the first one that says circle by dimension and center. So I click on the command and Carrie will ask me the radius. And I'm going to say the radius needs to be 300. I'm going to say OK. And as you can see, it's given me a preview of my circle. So I'm going to move my pointer. You can see there is a signal there, but I want to introduce the S for snap now. So I'm going to switch off my smart snap, and now I'm going to work between freehand and auto snap. So I'm going to press S for auto snap, and I indicate where I would like to place my circle. Now we also do have the lead segment command. That means because I only want to keep half of my circle. So on the left hand side, we go to modify. And in the sub column, you will see there's a command that's called delete segment. So I'm going to click on the command and Gary will ask me, indicate segment to be deleted. So indicate the first point, second, and I want to delete those two as well. So now I'm done with that one. I'm going to press escape. And as you can see, my command line is empty. I'm also done with my construction line. So I can select my construction line by left click and I can press delete on the keyboard. Now I would like to create the dimensions at the top left hand side. I want to create construction lines to the center of that hexagon profile. So it's 150. So the command that we're going to use on the left hand side, we go to geometry. And in the sub column, we go to parallel. Now the distance, as you can see, is 150 millimeter. I'm going to say OK. And Carrie will ask me, click on the correct side of the line. Now, as you can see, the preview of my pointer, that is the freehand mode. So if I move my pointer to the inside, because I want to go parallel to the vertical line, I'm going to left click and it generates a construction line 150 millimeter from my existing line. The same as from the bottom and the same as on the right hand side as well as from the top. So those four construction lines will be the intersection where I'm going to place this hexagon profile. Now to create those hexagon profile you'll see that at the top under my line toolbar we've got a command that's called polygon otherwise we can just go to draw lines and you'll see we'll also have the command there that's called Polygon is exactly the same command. So I'm going to click on the command. I'm going to make use of my toolbar. And the specs will be as follow. The polygon data number of sides will be 6. My bottom angle remains 0, horizontal. My outside diameter will be 150. And by default it will update your inside diameter and your side length. My origin will be center. I'm going to say OK. And as you can see it's attached to my pointer. And all I have to do is now I can zoom in and I can place my profile. I'm going to press escape, R for regen, and there's my hexagon profile. Now as you can see there's a circle in the middle as well. So the radius then that will be 30 millimeter. And then there's an additional circle parallel to it with 15 millimeter. So what we're going to do is on the left hand side we stick under the draw. You will use exactly the same circle command. So we're going to say circle by dimension. The radius, as I said, I know it's 30 millimeter. I'm going to say OK and Gary will ask me enter circle center point. So I'm going to zoom in and because I'm S for snap, I get a signal, left click and I place the circle. 
Now, if you notice that the outside circle, that's a dotted line. So what we're going to do is, on the left-hand side, we're going to use the parallel command. So in my applications, we're going to use parallel. The distance will be 15 millimeter. I'm going to say OK. But before I'm going to indicate, if you look at the top, my line style at the moment is set to continuous. I would like to change it to a P dash. So even if I'm in a command, I can still make changes to the pen color or the line style or even on a different layer. So I'm just going to change it now to a different pen color as well as a different line style. And Cat will still ask me indicate the circle, polyline, arc or ellipse on the correct side. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to indicate the outside of my circle. I'm going to press escape and as you can see, there's my Xcan profile with my two circles. Now I'm going to show you the copy command. So I'm going to press F for freehand. And I'm going to select from left to right. Because if I'm going to select from right to left, it will select my construction lines as well. And I don't want to include my construction lines. So I'm going to left click, start my selection box. And I go all the way to the opposite corner. As Gary asked me, I'm going to left click. And as you can see, it select my hexagon profile. I'm going to right click now and as you can see we've got the CSM. Now as soon as that object is selected then you can move, copy, rotate, scale or mirror those objects as well as the additional commands. But we want to use the copy command. So I'm going to say copy. Caddy will ask me pick origin. Now because I want to work accurate I'm going to press S for snap because I want to snap to the mirror. And as you can see I get a signal. I'm going to left click and now it's attached to my pointer. So I can zoom out and I can place it to the next point next intersection and the next intersection. I'm going to press escape. R for regen. It's just always good to press R for regen. That will refresh your display. And now we're done with the drawing part. So now we just have to do the finishes. So now we're going to do the dimensions first and then the hatching and the text. So to do the dimensions, on my left hand side you will see that there's under my applications an annotate command and then in the sub column we're going to make use of the horizontal and the vertical dimension. Now there's a dimension set where you can set it up. You can manage to create your own dimension style. Once you give it a name, you can go to modify. You can tell Kari what your pen color need to be, your arrowhead, as well as your pen color of your text, your extension lines. Do it need to be a fixed length or not? So I've just set up this dimension style and we're going to apply it. So I'm going to make use of the horizontal dimension first. So I'm going to click on the dimension and now you will notice that my pointer automatically have changed. The reason for it is because Caddy knows that you need to work accurate when it comes to dimensions. So I'm just going to show you again. I'm going to press escape to cancel the command. F for freehand. I'm in freehand mode. As soon as I click on the horizontal one, it automatically changed. Now Caddy asks us indicate change dimension start. So I indicate the first point. And I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to indicate the second point. And I can place my dimension. You can also be more specific when it comes to placing your dimension. That if I'm going to do a horizontal dimension, any dimension, if I indicate the start point and I indicate the end point, the first one I've placed manually. If I want to be more specific, if we read the command line, CAD will ask us, indicate point for dimension or type in O for offset. So I'm going to press O on the keyboard for offset. And I'm going to make that 250 millimeter. So if I press enter, it will place the dimension exactly 250 millimeter from those two points that I've indicated. So on the right hand side, I'm going to make use of the vertical dimension. Indicate first point, second point. This one I'm just going to place manually because carry ask us indicate point for the dimension. And now I'm just carry on. Indicate next point. Indicate next point. And I press escape. On the left hand side we still need one dimension there, vertical dimension, indicate the start point of the dimension, indicate the end point, and I can position it manually. So I press escape, so now my drawing has been dimensioned, so now we're going to do the hatching. Now because I'm done with the construction lines, I can delete it, but I can also switch it on and off. At the bottom, in your status bar, is what we call my scope toolbar, because this toolbar here at the bottom control the visibility of an object. So the first one is if I left click you will see it switch on and off the lines. The second one is the text and then you will see it controls the visibility of the dimensions as well. 
So just switch it on and off. And now this one is the construction line. So I'm going to switch off the construction lines. Maybe I would like to use it on a later stage again. So for this exercise, I'm just going to switch it off because now we're going to fill the area inside with a hatch. Now to activate the hatch, on my left hand side, we go to draw. And in the sub column, we go down to quick hatch. On the right hand side, you'll see a quick hatch dialog will open. Now, as you can see under my fill, there's some full hatch samples. If I go to my pattern, those are the patterns that I've assigned. You can add your own pattern hatches by just right click inside, add to list, depends on what you would like to add. So I'm going to say add pattern hatch. And as you can see in the dialog, on the left hand side is all the names of the pattern hatches that's available. Or I can just left click inside the preview and there I get a more realistic preview of my type of hatch that I would like to use. And then you select your pattern, as you can see it's give you a preview. You select your pen color that you would like this hatch to be in, as well as to be more specific when you work according to scale. I'm going to say OK, and as you can see it's been added to my quick hatch dialog. So for our exercise we made use of a gradient hatch. So as you can see I've got pattern hatches, I've got the line style hatch, I've got full hatches. We're going to make use of the gradient. I've already added this gradient hatch. So now we're going to focus how to apply the hatching. So I'm going to zoom in. At the bottom right hand side you will see that we've got options. Now because this is a closed object, I'm going to make use of the inside. Then at the bottom you will see there's an option that says auto. Now as soon as I move my pointer over the auto, Caddy will give you an explanation because you've got auto, prompt for island, island via keyboard shortcut. For our exercise we're just going to keep it auto. Straightforward and simple. So set it to inside and set to auto. Now as you can see we do have islands inside so all I have to do is I'm going to left click and drag my hatch and I'm going to drop it inside the area. Now Caddy will ask us indicate inside area for hatch slash island. So now I just have to go and indicate where I would like to have an island. So I can either click inside as you can see the position for my pointer creates an island or I can even click just above my outside of my hexagon because the rule says it will look to the nearest object and then it fill or create an island inside. So those are the two ways of creating islands. I'm going to zoom in, either click inside, go to the next one, indicate at the top in a vertical direction below that particular point. Caddy will pick up the component and it will create an island inside. So there's my hatching and my dimensions. So now we just need to do the text. So I'm going to close my quick hatch and to, to apply your text on my left hand side we go down to annotate and in the sub column you'll see the second command says enter text via editor. So I'm going to click on the command, Caddy brings up the editor. As you can see that's the font that I'm going to make use of. That will be my pen color for my text. My text height at the scale of 1 and 50. We've got width factor, angle is 0 at the moment. Now at the bottom right hand side I can ask Caddy to show the preview or switch it off. I would like to see my preview as I add my text. So I'm going to type in Caddy drawing. Because it's set to none, it look at my angle that is horizontal. So I'm going to say OK and I can place my text. R for region. And now I also want to just show to you the toolbar at the bottom. I've mentioned about control the visibility of the object. So now I can switch on and off my text switch on and off my hatch, switch on and off my dimensions, my construction lines. So that's very handy when it comes to a dense drawing. This is the basics that's been covered, how to work with lines, dimensions, hatch and text.